If you live in the southeast US, you've probably seen one of these guys before. And if you've got mice or chicken eggs around, they're gonna be super common. So today, I'm heading out to try and catch one of these black rat snakes to see just how dangerous they are to people. That's what I'm basically looking for, is abandoned sets of eggs. What the rat snakes will be doing is they'll be looking for eggs to snack on. Got all kinds of tin and boards out here. I've been setting them this spring so that I actually have like spots for snakes to hide. We get lots of racers, copperheads, rat snakes, lots of little fossorials out here. And I've already found more snakes at this point in the year than I usually do, but I'm still getting to the point where I can reliably find the ones that I want to see. Got another piece of tin out in here. Now I wouldn't put money on a rat snake being underneath this one, but since we're out closer to more aquatic habitats, I thought at least give it a look. Let's see anything. Lots of spider webs. Look at this little guy. Hey buddy. He's not peeing, that's a good sign. May not be a rat snake, but this is pretty cool. It's a classic Central North Carolina reptile. Love finding these guys. Usually I see them out way out in the road and I need to move them so I don't get hit. But this is a nice Eastern box turtle. My guess would be male because of the bright colors. If he pokes his face out again, I could see these have redder eyes and it's a male. Um, I don't know what he'd be doing underneath the tin here. Um, though I do happen to see them out in this little thicket here once in a while. So maybe he's just taking shelter from the rain. We've been having on and off rain. Or during the rainstorms, the rat snakes what we're looking for will actually go underneath tin inside little pieces of debris. So I'm kind of looking around underneath all kinds of stuff inside tubes and things, hoping to find one. But uh, this will certainly do as a cool little find. Hoping it'll come out of its shell really quick so we can actually see his cute little face. But um, reason they're called box turtles is they can literally box themselves in like this. like in his little uh, plastron here, the bottom part of his shell, this is actually hinged. And when they tuck in, they can tuck all the way in. This folds over and they are completely enclosed from predators. And this, super, super tough. Uh, I don't know a lot of things that could bite through this. And I don't know a lot of things that would want to bite through this because honestly, he looks just like a rock or something when he's completely enclosed. And uh, most animals out here will leave him alone. Except for me, of course, because I like finding these little guys, but uh, definitely a neat little find. Right, but I've got a couple more places I want to check, and hopefully we'll get a rat snake. Thing is, try as I might, these guys are actually really hard to find in their natural environment. And whenever I do find them, it's usually by accident. Alright, so I've been out here for a few hours. My dad just called me. Apparently, while I've been out here, a rat snake made a move on the chicken area. So he found a rat snake, he's got it. I'm gonna go inside and grab it. And even though I didn't technically catch it and find it, I'm still gonna film it because apparently it's big. It's probably one of the biggest rat snakes I have ever seen. Just look at the size of this guy. I've always wanted to do a video on an adult rat snake. Thing is, I never see these guys out in actual habitat. This guy was found coming out of our barn where he was hunting for eggs. And that's usually how I find these snakes is either I'll find them or my parents will come yelling for me, saying, hey, we've got a snake in the barn or in the chicken coop looking for eggs. Get him out of here, or we're gonna cut his head off with a shovel. But how dangerous are these guys actually? Snakes get a really bad reputation for being harbingers of doom. So if you find a black rat snake on your property, are you in any trouble? Well, the nice thing about these guys is that they're non-venomous, so I'm completely okay handling him like this. I might take a bite and uh, it would certainly be unpleasant. Best way I can describe a snake bite, it almost feels like being slashed with thorns. It doesn't really feel like a bite. And that's because these guys give up their bite force capabilities with their expandable throats. Rat snakes, copperheads, pretty much any kind of snake you're gonna find, they're actually gonna be eating stuff that's usually bigger than their head. What ends up happening as a result of that 
is they're not gonna have much bite force. See a lizard, an insect, a snapping turtle, things like that, they're eating stuff smaller than their head and they're usually gonna chew a little bit to swallow it down. These guys tackle prey bigger than their head and usually swallow it down whole. So they're gonna sacrifice that bite force in favor of being able to eat bigger prey, which means you take a bite from one of these guys, it's gonna hurt, but it's not gonna be like a big pinch like you get from a lizard. You're gonna actually have these teeth that line their jaw and they're gonna scratch you up a little bit uh, more than they're actually going to pinch you. And your real danger with one of these animals is gonna be infection. I take a bite from a rat snake, it's gonna hurt a little bit, I'm probably gonna be fine. I'm gonna wanna wash the wound immediately because of the kind of things these guys eat. You know, dirty chicken eggs in our coops, rats, mice, things that are generally pretty disease ridden, you can bet that there's gonna be some nasty bacteria in these guys' mouths as well. So getting slashed open by his teeth might be a pretty uh, unsavory picture for your circulatory system. Now, luckily for me, as you can see right here, this is typical rat snake behavior. Once they're picked up and you're not putting any kind of ex, you know, I'm not like grabbing him really tight. You see, I've got a loose grip on his coils right here. I'm occasionally lifting his head up so you can see him in the camera view, but I'm not really overly threatening or stressing out this animal. He's not super happy because he wants to go back into the grass and the vines and hunt for things. Um, and he certainly doesn't want to be interacting with a giant human because as big a snake as this is, I'm much bigger than he is. So he has every right to be defensive if he wanted to be, but look at how chill he is. His movements are slow, relaxed. He's flicking his tongue, inspecting the environment. Um, he's not rattling his tail. He's not getting into his S pose up here. That usually means, hey, I'm gonna bite you if you try to mess with me. These guys are super chill. Water snakes, garter snakes, things like that, racers, a lot of the other common snakes out here in central North Carolina are a lot testier than these guys are. Your corn snakes and black rat snakes are generally super, super docile and super, super wonderful snakes to work with. Sure, they're big, sure they might be a little bit scary looking, but overall, definitely an easy, easy snake to work with. Now I'm gonna go ahead and bring this guy down the road and release him just so he doesn't come back here and mess with the eggs. But if you wanna see a really challenging snake encounter I had, I actually had to use a pool net to catch a copperhead and get it away from our dogs. If you wanna see that video, check it out right here. But until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.